What is up guys and welcome back to another Grey Hat Garage video. Um, it's been a while since I've done this. Um, been slacking a little bit uh, with work and I started doing some Grey Hat Gaming live streams. Um, but I figured we better get the car put back together. So uh, we're going to go ahead and bust a butt on this car today. Um, I'm going to start off of this video by sorting this issue. So as I'm sure you guys can tell from all the videos and stuff, the lighting in the garage is, um, it's terrible. So I'm gonna start the day off by going and picking up some bulbs for um, this giant ballast I have. Um, and then I got this other one right here that needs bulbs. We'll uh, go ahead and get those hung from some of these hooks. And uh, yeah, then we'll have some better lighting and uh, we'll kick the video off from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and we'll see you in a bit. We're back and we got the bulbs um, right here. So this is a 48 inch bulb, this one right here. And then there's that one, or those two essentially. 93 inches, those things are huge. So that should be plenty of light um, for the garage. Super stoked on that, finally gonna have light in here so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start getting those put up and hung figure out the light source or the power source for them because um, they'll be hanging from up there and I got this one plug that's anywhere close so I might have to run a power strip off that with um, an extension cord or something up to those Whatever we have to do, we'll make it uh, work. We'll get it figured out. So, yeah, I'm going to start doing that. And we'll see how it goes. All right, just add another light shot. All right, we'll be right back. So we've confirmed that the uh, the lights still work, the ballast. Um, I wasn't sure because the lights had just kind of quit working. Um, but yeah, all they needed was new bulbs. Um, I got them turned on right in front of me and the lighting is so much better. This is going to be workable. So next thing I got to do is uh, figure out how to mount them and kind of decide where I'm going to mount them. Uh, I'm kind of thinking I might try and make the big one fit right there, but I might hook it onto those and run it along that side. Um, I don't have a lot of hook options. So yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. There's a possibility I might just try and mount it to the wall or something of that nature, but uh, yeah, they work. It's gonna fix the lighting situation in here better. The um, My actual camera is going to pick up, or the quality is gonna be way better because it gets a lot of noise in the picture because the low, super low light. But yeah, we got that figured out, super stoked on that. Um, just gotta get them mounted now and uh, we can push forward on the car. All right, so we got the uh, lighting situation pretty well sorted. Um, we went ahead and hung that one up there, um, running down to that power strip. Uh, can kind of tell, but for some reason one of these bulbs quit working. Um, not sure why, but that's fine. We'll fix that later. And then the big one we hung over there. To uh, So this one, the smaller one, illuminates the engine bay pretty well. Um, for anything that you pull in here, it's going to be good. And then this one up here. It's gonna illuminate, you know, kind of where I work the most. Um, I will be putting a permanent workbench in there sometime here in the fairly, uh, it's pretty soon, uh, but it will be a little bit. And then probably more shelves like these ones. Um, over here where all that crap is, where I keep all the tires and the bumper and stuff like that. Um, all this stuff's gonna go in house in the storage if you just haven't done it yet. Um, yeah. So, all, both of those lights run to this switch, so I just flip that, they both turn off. 
flip it and it both turn back on. So worked out pretty good. I'm super happy with it. Uh, finally getting some lighting situated so that we can, uh, so that I can work in here and actually see what I'm doing without lights all over the place. All right, so let's uh, go over what we're gonna be doing today kind of. So I got this main wire harness unwrapped. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is going to unmask this and I'll put the valve cover back on here. Um, I might paint or uh, cover the valve cover a little bit with some tape or something to keep it from scratching while I'm still working under here. But we'll put that back on so we can get an idea of what we're doing with the coil harness. Um, we're going to route each of these to their respective spots and rewrap all of that nice and clean. Get it tucked down under there. Um, figure out what we're doing with this. Test fit the intake manifold. Um, so we know where we want to run all this stuff. Uh, I will likely be splitting this, trying to see how much wire I get from this and this, um, how long those are so that maybe I can like run this one over here, um, you know, up through here or something, and then this one right along here somewhere, and then maybe tuck this down underneath. Not sure on that yet. Uh, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going to go ahead and start and uh, start getting this thing put back together. I still have the intercooler piping. I was thinking of getting painted, um, but I haven't done that yet. I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but uh, we'll see how it goes. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go get the parts out here. Um, the valve cover, intake manifold, and throttle body. Um, start pulling some of my hardware and the gaskets and stuff out, and uh, start working this off on this. Oh yeah, uh, one more thing. Swinging you guys all over here is I'm going to be. In fact, I might start with this, pulling this uh, shifter linkage off, um, pulling the shaft out, and replacing the pivot shaft seal in there so that that stops leaking. Get that cleaned up real well. I should probably start with that just to get it done. I did get the pivot shaft seal ordered, as well as a new intake manifold gasket. So um, I should have everything to put it back together. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get all that out here, and uh, we'll get started on this. Got a little bit more tidying up done, and uh, got the parts out here. So uh, check this out, guys. I think this will probably be pretty well the first time seeing it in the light. It's got some fingerprints and smudges and stuff on it. I don't know where these circles came from, but not a big deal. A lot of imperfections, but that's kind of how things go with spray paint. Once they're cleaned up, they'll look way better. Got to get them all unmasked and, uh, yeah. Got that. Pivot shaft seal. Thing's tiny, but should fix that problem and a replacement intake manifold gasket. So, super stoked on that color. Um, I think it's gonna look awesome, especially once the full engine base put back together. Uh, yeah, just figured I'd show you guys that real quick, because uh, I don't think you guys have seen it in the light yet. Um, and now we're gonna get started on that pivot shaft seal. All right, so I got started on this uh, pivot shaft seal. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of walk you guys through it, do kind of a how-to video for this one. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna work it in, I was thinking about doing two different videos, or at least separating some of the um, content from this video to do a how-to for this pivot shaft seal. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and probably leave it in here as one video and just label the video so that people looking um, for how to do this uh, pivot shaft seal can find it. So I did get started. Um, first thing you're going to do is, so this bracket sits in here underneath that. Um, first thing you're gonna wanna do is uh, pop the shift linkage off. Um, it does just pop off with um, a pry bar. I just use a small pry bar. However, be very careful because if you break these plastic pieces, um, then uh, Mazda does not sell these uh, by themselves, so you have to buy the entire cable. And 
In order to replace that entire cable, you have to disassemble the entire dash of the car. So be very careful with these. Like I said, I did just pop it off. It's not that big a deal. Just be careful with it. Um, and if you do pop them off too many times, they'll get sloppy and pop off while you're driving. Um, this one goes here. That other one just goes onto that bracket. And then you have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 12 millimeter bolts to pull out. So pretty simple there. And then this is down here, I believe, is a 13 or something, and it is like a set screw. So I don't remember exactly what it is, but I remember it from the forum. So once I get that bolt out, this technically, I don't believe, will slide right out without um, pulling that. So going to get that last bolt out down there, and then I'll go ahead and get these bolts, and we'll go from there. All right, so I forgot one thing. Um, in order to get this back bolt out here, um, you got to pull the motor mount, the, the trans mount. I believe that it's just uh, this bolt, this bolt, and that bolt, and it might be able to swing up. If not, you may have to pull this uh, large bolt out. Uh, I'm not sure what size those bolts are. Um, looks like a maybe eleven sixteenths kind of fits. Um, I believe it's the millimeter equivalent. I can't think of it, what it is off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, so it's these three bolts. And then I believe this uh, long bolt that actually holds the motor mount together, get that bracket out of the way, then this bolt right here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. It's pretty easy. Um, to clarify, these bolts um, for the motor mount, they are uh, 17s. You have two nuts, um, two nuts, and one actual bolt. Um, yeah, so 17s. Uh, make sure that you Put a jack under your car um, to support the motor because you are essentially pulling the motor mount off so that can move. Um, the, uh, the nuts have these little cone washers underneath them, kind of help hold it in its, its place. So pretty easy. Um, yeah, once you get those off, this big old bracket just slides right off and then you can get access to your last bolt there. So pretty easy. I'm going to pull that last bolt out um, and then pull that set screw and we'll go ahead and pull this assembly out and see what it looks like. There's a set screw. See if we can get to focus. There we go. Okay, so there's a set screw. Um, to clarify, that is a 14. So you got 12s on the top, then the 14, um, and uh, 17, yeah, 17 for the motor mount. Um, and then once you pull that set screw out from down there, um, you obviously have uh, some sort of sealant here. Um, what I did to, because I couldn't just pull this straight out because it's, you know, got sealant, I put a pry bar right here and just pried sideways a little bit and it just popped over. So now that should, might have to go ahead and do it again. Yeah, so I just put this in here like this. Just pry it over a little bit and it just popped off like that. And then, theoretically, put this back where it was. I believe that that should all just come out. Oh, yep, there it goes. Now it obviously goes into your uh, transmission fluid, so it's going to kind of make a mess. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set it back for a sec, get an area set up that I can work on that, um, and then we'll go from there. Make sure you uh, throw a towel or a cloth or something, a bag maybe, inside this hole so that you don't get any crud. 
um, drop down into your transmission. Um, and then try and keep a fairly clean space when working on this piece. So once you get it out, this is what it looks like. There you go. And uh, so we have to punch this. Come on. There we go. Focus. Okay. We got to punch this pin out. Um, and I believe that it can only come out from uh, one side, which I believe is the first side I showed you. So yeah, you're just going to need a tap of some sort, um, punch, and just uh, punch that out. Yeah, so we're going to go ahead and punch that out, and then I believe that this piece um, will slide out of this piece. Um, I don't know. I believe that the holes only line up one way when you're done. Um, I will drop a link to the uh, forum write-up on how to do this. I would recommend you follow that. This will just kind of give you... Um, somewhat visual instructions um, to kind of roughly go off of and then I'd say follow the forum for the rest of it or for the real details. I believe that on the forum they mark something. I don't know if it's, you know, from here to make sure this lines up right. I'll probably end up doing that. Um, take a paint pen mark from here, there, onto this piece and then um, I can't think of anything else that could really need marked because I think everything should just be fine. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that little pin pushed out, and uh, we'll slide this out and go from there. All right, so my phone died yesterday, which means uh, my camera died. Um, so no more video, essentially. Uh, but we're back at it. We're not working today because the weather is terrible, rainstorms and stuff. So uh, um, yeah, I just wrapped it up last night. Um, I just quit working on this so that I could finish walking through, uh, but I did do a little bit more. Um, so like I was saying, you just punch this pin out. Um, I just used a screwdriver and a hammer, pretty straightforward there. Um, this hole right here is smaller on one side than it is on the other side. You know, there's a little bit of marking there. Somebody might have replaced this once already, um, but yeah. This side of the hole is bigger than this side, so obviously you're going to want to punch it out um, from the small side out through the large side. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then I just kind of set everything in the position that it came out in, and then the seal itself, this right here, just sits inside there. Pretty straightforward, just pull that out. I just used... Um, the screwdriver to pry it out, no big deal. Try not to gouge the sides, but it comes out pretty easy. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean the face of this up, clean that all up, all the grime. Put the new seal in and then put it back together. And like I said, um, the forums will kind of say to mark things um, so that it all stays, you know, so it goes back together the same. But I think so long as you just keep track of how things came out, then it should be okay. should all go back together only one way and should work out good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the new seal in there, put that thing back together, the whole thing, and then get back to you guys as I put it back in the car, try and clean up the area a little bit from all the, um, from all the oil that is leaked out. We'll get it all cleaned up and put back. And then we should be able to um, start wrapping the um, harness, uh, put the valve cover back on, and do a couple other things like that, and hopefully get the car most of the way put back together so we can start driving it again. It's been too long since I've driven it. It's kind of bumming me out a little bit, and I'm kind of losing motivation, so I need to get put back together and start moving forward with the build again. Um, so, yeah, I will uh, get that thing put back together and get back to you guys as soon as that's done and we'll put it back in the car and go from there. All right, guys, so I got it put back together. Um, I was gonna record a time-lapse for you guys, but for some reason the camera didn't, so 
yeah, typical camera issues. I'm trying to use my actual camera, um, but they didn't do it, so it's okay. I struggled with it way too long. Um, it is back together. I honestly am gonna have to go back and look at the old footage to know if I actually put it back together the right way. And I can't even guarantee that it's gonna seal. We'll see how it goes. Um, I'm gonna look at the old footage and, you know, figure it out. But essentially just slide everything back together. Um, this piece off this top plate slides into this notch and then you pound your pin back in. Um, so yeah, got to put back together. It wasn't too difficult. I mean, it kind of was. I struggled for a while trying to hold this piece the weight up um, so that I can pound that pin in and hold the weight because I can't access the pin hole if the weight's not stuck up. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and look at the old footage, make sure this is correct. If it's not, I'm going to fix it, and I'll let you guys know. If it is, then we'll be back putting it in the car. So, uh, yep, I'll be right back with that. As far as I can tell, I got the uh, pivot shaft all put back together the correct way, looking at my old footage. Um, it might not be a bad idea at all to take pictures of the whole thing uh, before you go ahead and pull it apart, just to make sure that it goes back together the same way. So we're just about ready to throw it back in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a light bead of RTV uh, silicone, or R yeah, RTV gasket maker um, around this to make sure it seals. And then we'll pull the rag out and we'll put that in. Um, I believe I will be using Ultra Black. Um, I don't know if it's recommended for this application. Um, but it's maximum oil resistance, and I know that, that thing was pretty oily, so uh, yeah, that's what we'll be using. I'm not sure if I'll put it on there or on here, uh, but we'll figure that out. Just do a slight, or a very small bead. Um, something to note, probably doesn't matter that much, but I'm going to put the bead as close to the edge as I can so that it squeezes out more so than in. Um, you know, so obviously I want to get full coverage once I crank it down, but I don't want it, you know, squishing into the, uh, the transmission. So we'll figure that out. I'm going to go ahead and do that. We'll get the shaft put back in and then, uh, yeah, go from there. Got it all put back together. Uh, hopefully it doesn't leak. I swear every time I do a seal, I'm always paranoid it's going to leak or worried I did something wrong, but I guess the only time will tell. Um, did my bead of silicone, uh, and then just put all the bolts back in. Keep in mind, all of these bolts are the uh, same length besides one, and it's quite a bit shorter. And it goes back here on the back of the bracket, so it's pretty easy to keep track of. It's uh, that one. I'm just throwing that out there. Cleaned up all the, the little bit of silicone that squeezed out. Hopefully that seals there. Hopefully the pivot shaft seal itself is good snapped these back on um they snapped on really really easy it's kind of a common issue for these to get loose and pop off i've never had it happen i'm hoping that it never does but we'll see how that goes um got to throw the rear motor mount or the transmission mount back on and uh yeah then we'll move forward um with that so went pretty good hopefully it doesn't leak uh like i said only time will tell um, so yeah, let's go ahead and probably unmask the uh, valve cover, everything, and uh, get the actual valve cover itself put on and get an idea what we're looking at for wiring and uh, move forward. So let's do that.
Any ideas? Any ideas? So uh, I made a big old mess over here, getting everything unmasked. Um, but yeah, it turned out pretty good. Um, I did end up chipping this here, which is really kind of bothering me. Uh, I just don't have good luck with paint. I know I should get everything powder coated, but we'll do that later. Um, if you guys have any ideas on how to keep things from chipping. I know that I should have wet, um, unmasked everything while the paint was wet, so as not to create the chipping edges, um, but that's done. Um, we got the valve cover set. Man, I'm just loving it. Um, put a couple bolts in it. We definitely need to get some dress-up washers. I really should take a wire brush and clean these up. I might do that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put the coil packs in, get an idea how we're going to run this coil harness, and uh, then start getting that wrapped, making some pretty good progress. Super stoked on this. Uh, can't wait to get it finished. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that, do a couple more things. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Before we get to that, I totally, totally forgot about the list, um, but now I remember. So let's go ahead and mark a couple things off of it, finally. All right, so what do we got? Paint valve cover. Oh, my sharpie's not working. Um, Oh, there we go. Okay. Paint valve cover. See if my pen works. Done. Uh, paint intake manifold. Done. We have not painted the intake gloss. Um, I am not sure if this is something I even want to do. Intercooler piping. We'll do that later. Um, strut bar. Fuel rail. Done. Um, other misc items. Not sure uh, what the plan is for that. The 
fix T case output shaft. Done. We did that in our last video, I believe. Still got to build a battery tray. Not sure how far I'll get on that because I haven't been able to get argon for my welder. Um, working on making a wire truck harness. Um, replace headlight lens. Not sure when we'll get to that. Shorten coil cover hardware. I still need to do that. I'll probably end up just cutting what I have um, and getting shorter bolts, but I'm unsure on that yet. Um, paint radiator cover. I might just take some uh, black restoration to that. Fix pivot shaft seal. We just did that, so that's done. Um, replace right front sway bar end link. We got that done at the same time as fixing the transfer case. Uh, purge valve sol solenoid will get done when we put everything back together. Um, we drained the oil catch can, but we have not re relocated it yet. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure if we're actually going to relocate it, but we'll see how that goes. Um, still need to do the rust inhibitor on the rear panels. I'm not sure when we'll get to that. Um, so as well as the rear window pillars and the rust on the roof. Uh, I might take care of all those by themselves in another video, but uh, yeah. We finally, finally got some stuff marked off the list. For how long it's been, it's not been a lot off the list, uh, but we did get some, so good deal on that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get back to uh, probably cleaning up that hardware for the, intake, or the valve cover um, and start trying to figure out the wire tuck harness. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get to that and uh, I'll update you guys here in a bit. Made some progress uh, on the wire tuck harness. Oh, I'm sure you guys what I got going on here. So just kind of mocking everything up. Uh, man, I just cannot get over that color. Especially shadowed. <laughs> anyway, so... Um, See, where did I put the harness? Oh, right here. Okay, so this is what I got so far. Um, these are each of the coil pack plugs, um, and they're in their spots they're supposed to be. I still gotta figure out what I'm doing with all this. Um, but yeah, it fits in here pretty nice with the, uh, it plugged in and then this all tucks in here. Uh, I'll show you guys, probably post a picture of it right here so that you get a better idea. And then I was working on some routing. Um, this looks like it's pretty good right here. Um, I believe it's going to be mostly covered, so I don't need to worry about, you know, make, I might zip tie it kind of out of the way. And then the plug comes down here. This is going to be rewrapped. It should be able to run up there just fine, just like it does. Um, this plug, so it plugs into this piece of the harness. Um, that'll all get rewrapped, and then this is going to run through here, I believe. I'll rewrap it all up to here, just like that. Um, this will have a cover over it. This will have a cover over it. And, uh, yeah, so that should make so that this can all just, yeah, so that will just kind of, sit in there fairly well covered with all of this wrapped and plugged in i think it should work out pretty good pretty stoked on it still got to figure out the what i'm going to do with all these um but it's going to be quite a process i'm still just trying, trying to decide what i'm going to do um still need to figure out that uh, but yeah made some progress pretty stoked on it um I think I'm going to continue working on it. It's getting pretty late, so I'm going to go clean up and go to bed. I got work in the morning. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll wrap this video up right here or if I will just um, tomorrow after work or something continue. Depends on how long I think it's going to be. But yeah, this is going to be quite a process, um, so I might just stop here and uh, start the video, another video, um, continuing the process. We'll just have to see how it goes. So... Yeah, pretty stoked on that. Um, yeah, tons to do. Um, actually, show you here real quick. I still need to... So this little red piece broke. Um, and it just has a hose that plugs into it. I might end up running black uh, rubber hose from here up and down inside there. 
so that I can route it around outside there. I'm going to have to try and fit all this stuff. I don't know if you can see, see the PCV valve right here where my finger's at. That's the PCV valve. I got to run my oil catch can off of that and off of that bung right there. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a pretty tight fit. Still lots to do, um, but we'll keep tucking away at it and should hopefully have this done here pretty soon. Oh, one thing I wanted to mention, if any of you guys are wondering what I'm using for my wire harness tape, um, this is Tessa tape. And it's pretty commonly used in uh, OEM applications. It is like a material kind of. Um, usually used by like Audi and BMW, I believe. So yeah, um, I will link the specific um, model for this tape because I actually have two different kinds. This is more of like a softer, more interior type harness tape. And this is more heat resistant and a more durable material. So I will link the, uh, the model to both of those. If I can find it, I will try and do my best on that. Um, so that if you guys want, you can use that stuff as well. Anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you have a killer day, and we'll see you in the next one. Update time, guys. So I made a bunch of progress. Again, <laughs> we're getting pretty far. Pretty stoked about this. Uh, but I ran into a couple issues. Let me go ahead and show you what I've got done so far. So we got this stuff all wrapped pretty well we're still sorting cables um, this is wrapped uh, you know kinda got this stuff routed where I want it it's out of the way uh, haven't made any more progress on the coil harness itself but we got that um, yeah so I don't know you can't really see it down there but it's all wrapped and out of the way um, we got this one back here to the the main plug to the coil harness. There we go, focused, wrapped. Um, got this all wrapped up and routed the way I want it. Super stoked on the way that turned out. We would be further, but I was working with this um, plug for the electronic boost controller and the... Uh, I guess it broke off like two days ago, and then I found that it was butt connected, and this piece popped out. So I'm trying to track down this plug. I can just order it, um, which I may have to do. But um, I was really hoping to find it local. So I'm gonna run to a couple part stores see if I can track that thing down. Um, if not, then probably just end up. Uh, wrapping this video up and getting it ordered and then trying again tomorrow, maybe Monday. Um, I will definitely be putting in some more work on the car, most likely um, tomorrow. And then hopefully that part will be here Monday, so I may be able to work on it more after work, but we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, so that's just a quick update. I will get back to you guys once I've got some more done or figure out what I'm doing. All right, so at the end of the video in the um, the other day, uh, got caught up working on these plugs. Um, I finally got a pigtail wire to this plug uh, to fix it for the boost controller. Um, and then I had this plug break off. So I'm going to be trying to get that repaired. So yeah, uh, I didn't end the video, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to get those fixed, and then we'll start another video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button and uh, hope you guys have a killer day and we'll see you in the next one.